Hello everyone, my name is Tyler Bomba and I'm a senior in the AIM program covering domestic real estate. Today I will be pitching Unity Group, ticker UNIT. Before getting into my presentation, I wanted to talk a little bit about my screening process. I knew I wanted to focus on either a data center or a cell tower REIT since these companies would be less impacted by COVID-19 compared to other REITs. When examining the data center and cell towers, I found Unity because they used to have a small cell tower business. The companies had some in issues with their largest customer, Windstream Holdings, but these have since been resolved. Unity Group was spun out of Windstream Holdings in 2015 in order to create a tax-free entity. It is the only REIT that is focused on owning and building out fiber networks. Unity op operates through four business segments, leasing, fiber infrastructure, towers, and cons consumer CLIC. The leasing segment includes all rent payments for fiber optic cables associated with Windstream. The fiber infrastructure segment includes all rent revenue from fiber construction as well as lit service sales. Lit fiber is already in use but still has some additional capaci capacity that can be utilized. The tower business acquires and constructs cell, cell towers. Finally, the consumer CLIC business provides local telephone and internet service in the eastern and central U.S. Unity is headquartered in Little Rock, Arkansas. Now moving on to my recommendation. Since the spinoff in 2015, Unity has been working to diver diversify their revenues away from Windstream. Unity has been able to reduce their revenue exposure from 96% in 2015 down to only 65% today by building out additional fiber networks and acquiring other fiber assets. Unity owns a mix of dark and lit fiber. Dark fiber is pre-existing underground fiber that is not currently being used and requires the customer to spend additional capital on the equipment they require. Lit fiber cables, as I previously mentioned, are already in use and have additional capacity that can be leased out to other customers. In February 2019, Windstream filed for bankruptcy. Investors were uncertain whether a majority of Unity's rent revenues would be paid, so the stock dipped. After striking a deal with Unity, Windstream is expected to come out of bankruptcy within the next month. With this uncertainty disappearing, the stock should go back to trading on its fundamentals, something it has not done the past year. I'm recommending that Unity Group be added to the AIM Small Cap Equity Fund with a price target of $14.39, representing a 59% upside. Unity pays a dividend yielding 6.6%. My first driver is an increase in the fiber optic network demand. With the stay-at-home trend still in place, there is a continued need for internet bandwidth. The need for schools to accommodate distance learning will likely further the need for that bandwidth. These trends will be heightened in smaller rural cities, which is where the majority of unit, Unity's assets are located. In addition, the U.S. is experiencing a shift away from densely populated Tier 1 cities. All of these trends directly increase the demand for Unity's fiber assets. The second driver is, Unity's bank, is Windstream's bankruptcy emergence. On February 25, 2019, Windstream filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. After some negotiations, Windstream is expected to come out of bankruptcy soon. As a part of this settlement, Unity agreed to pay $450 million in cash and the proceeds from the sale of stock in, addition, in exchange for 450,000 fiber strand miles of new cable and 1.8 million existing strand miles. Unity is able to lease out the 1.8 million strand miles to other customers. In addition, Unity agreed to a capital growth improvement program as a part of the settlement. Unity will build networks that will be leased to Windstream at an 8% yield. Unity will also have the option to sell dark or lit fiber services of this build to other potential customers. Finally, there will be a greater dividend pol policy certainty. Unity is currently paying the minimum dividend required to be considered a REIT as required by its debt covenants. These covenants are lifted once Unity reaches 5.7 times net leverage. With the emergence of Windstream out of bankruptcy, the ability re to reduce leverage is heightened. It is likely that Unity increases their dividend in the future back to historical levels. In order to reach an intrinsic value for Unit, I created a 5-year DCF. Using a terminal growth rate of 1.5% and a WAC of 8.93%, an intrinsic value of $16.21 was reached. In addition, a price to FFO multiple was calculated. 
with a weighted peer average of 14.87 times, a relative value of $16.17 was reached. Finally, an EV to assets multiple was calculated. Using 2020 expected real estate assets of $3.1 billion and utilizing a, peer, a weighted peer average of 1.97 times, a relative value of $4.17 was calculated. By weighting these three models, 50, 35, 15, a price target of $14.39 was reached. I want to briefly touch on choosing peers for this company. Since Unity is the only REIT focused on owning and leasing out fiber optic cables, it was very challenging to find, pre to find peers. I ended up dividing my, peer group, my peers into two groups. The first two peers, Crown Castle and Coresight Realty, are REITs who own cell towers and data centers. This is the closest to the industry that Unity operates in, as their businesses will be impacted by bandwidth demand. The other two peers, Spirit Realty and National Health Investors, are REITs who structure their, con their contracts as triple net, like Unity. Triple net leases are agreements whereby the lessee promises to pay all of the expenses of the property, including insurance and maintenance. Since Unity should cl trade closer to these triple net lease REITs, I weighted these higher. Now to touch on risks. The first risk is windstream revenue exposure. Although Windstream is exiting bankruptcy in a much better financial position, there is a risk that the company does not perform well. If Windstream has any issues covering their financial obligations, Unity would be affected. The next, the next risk is high debt. Unity is highly levered. Management is confident in their abilities to pay down debt. However, any increases in the amount of debt may impact Unity's ability to pay down dividends, complete capital expenditures, and acquire. Briefly touching on management, Kenny Gunderman is the president and CEO of Unity Group. Before working at Unity, he worked at Stevens and KPMG. Mark Wallace is the executive vice president and CFO at Unity. Wallace was a managing director at Fortress Investment Group, CFO at New Senior Investment Group, and CFO at Westwood Holdings before Unity. Both of these executives has been, have been in their roles since the company was spun out of Windstream. Thank you for listening to my presentation. I'm happy to add, address any questions that may have arose in the D2L discussion or in the live Q&A session.